Okay, welcome back. So let's talk about strategies next. And we're on page 104. And it says there, the definition, a specific syntax of external and internal experience, which consistently produces a specific outcome. So human experience is an endless series of representations. To deal with this endless sequence, it's useful to suspend the process and contextualize it in terms of outcomes. So think of strategies then like the programs that we use to run our neuro neurolinguistic computer. And the results we get are like the outputs of those programs. So strategy is the person's recipe for achieving a particular outcome. If we change the ingredients or the steps, then we can get a different result. So why would you want to learn about strategies? Well, you see, everything that we do is connected to a strategy. That means if we're doing a particular behavior and it's working for us, great. If it's not, then we can change that strategy to get the results that we want. Example, you know, some people might run their strategies for pain for years. You know, how is it that they do that strategy? How is it that they always remember to do that pain? You see, when we recognize how other people run their strategies, they will save you time and will increase your chances and your ability to present information to somebody so that it's inside their thinking. Meaning, if you understand how somebody is running the strategy, we can understand, we can elicit and understand how they're running that strategy so that we can present that information to them within their way of thinking so that we can help to change that strategy for them. And of course, you know, as we think about strategies, we can actually figure out how to motivate people. And you'll also be able to help them to make better decisions or run their reassurance strategy, understand their deep love strategy, etc. So we'll be talking about those. So on the bottom of page 104, we'll see there that everything we do, we have a strategy for. So how we love, how we do tension, sex, sports, sales, how we make decisions, how we learn, how we do boredom, etc. And right at the bottom, we'll see there's a four-step strategy, and in this case, it leads to a decision. So that's a visual external, a visual remembered, an auditory remembered, kinesthetic, leading to a decision. Now, that's just an example of a decision-making strategy. And of course, we're going to actually look at a number of different strategies and see how they are made up. Now, I must tell you a funny story. One day, I wanted to buy a video camera so that I could record the training. And I was in South Africa, and there's this one particular department store or big shop called Game. And I was in the shopping center, sort of walking into the, the entrance of this store. And I, I really wanted the camera because I needed it for filming. And so I was walking into the door and I said to myself, yeah, you know what, but they don't have the type of camera that I want. And I turned around and I started walking out. And as I started walking out, I said to myself, but I really need this camera because I need to film. And I turned around and I started walking into the store. And as I started getting to the store, I said to myself, but, but I know they don't have it. And I don't want to buy one just for the sake of buying it. And I turned around and I started walking out. And I started saying to myself, but I really need, and I realized I was actually looping. Has that ever happened to you? I was busy looping and, go, and sort of going from one side to the other. And I recognized that I was doing it. And I said out loud, I said, just stop. And of course, there were other people around and they must have thought this guy's crazy, you know, speaking to himself like that. So has that ever happened to you? Have you ever looped? And so, you know, at that point in time, the strategy I was running, well, it wasn't working. And I was actually looping within the strategy. And if I was able to identify it, then of course I can go run a strategy that actually is working for me. 
Now there's two ways we can actually elicit a strategy. And we can do this via the formal strategy elicitation, which we'll look at shortly, as well as via the eye patterns. So remember we looked at eye patterns in an earlier video. So I could ask somebody, example, how did you decide those were the right boots to buy? And even before they start answering, their eyes may have moved in certain directions and now they've told me how they decided those were the right boots for them. Example, their eyes might have gone up into their visual and so they saw the boots and then their eyes moved down into the AD and they asked themselves, you know, is this the right price, the right size, checking criteria. AD in a strategy refers to criteria. And then, you know, maybe the eyes moved down to their kinesthetic. Maybe they tried the boots on or they got a good feeling about it. And then they decided those were the right boots. And so with their eyes moving up to visual, then AD, then K for kinesthetic, of course, that gives me an idea of what that decision-making strategy was for those boots. So that's one way I can use or elicit strategies. And the other way will be formal strategy elicitation, which, as I said, we'll look at shortly. So as we look at the components there then on page 104, it says discover. Now we've given you a mnemonic device and you'll see that it's D-U-C in capitals, then small k, capital I, small e. So it's really that D-U-C-I that we're going to use. But D-U-C doesn't really sound like anything. So, you know, you've got the mnemonic device ducky. So the first thing we want to do is we want to discover the strategy. So how are they doing that strategy? So the example I just gave you is by doing it with eye patterns. Then I want to utilize the strategy. So I want to feed back the information to the person in the same order and sequence in which I elicited it. So example on the bottom there where it says V-E-V-R-A-R-K, I would want to feed it back in that same order and sequence to test and make sure that it's the right strategy that I elicited. Then I could change and design the strategy. So if the strategy is not working for the client, we could change it or we can design a new strategy. And then if we did that, then of course, you know, we'd need to install that new strategy. So that's the components of actually doing the strategy. So we're going to discover, we're going to utilize, change and design and install the new strategy. So what this means is if I have a strategy that's not working, I can change my strategy and install one that's going to better serve me. And of course, also for my clients. Just a couple of auditory distinctions to make here. AD is usually your own voice and typically relates to criteria. And so this would be, is it the right size? Is it the right price? Uh, is it the right color? Is it the right material? Now, color could be visual, but if I'm making, if I'm going to make a buying choice, then it might actually be a criteria. So I have to have that black suit because it's a black suit event, you know, or I have to have those particular shoes because it goes with my trousers or, you know, a dress. So color can very often be criteria in the strategy as well. Auditory tonal or AT is often someone else's voice. Now this can be internal or external so I can hear somebody else's voice outside of me whether that be my mom or the salesperson or internal which I can remember or I can construct. But auditory tonal is somebody else's voice. Okay, so next let's talk about the elements and sequence of strategies. So what are these components uh, within strategies? So we're on page 105. I'd like you to think about if you were baking a cake. If you bake a cake, you're going to have a recipe. That recipe is going to require that you have certain ingredients and a certain way and method in how you would bake the cake. So certain steps that you're going to take. And this is true for a strategy. The strategy has the various elements, which are going to be VACOG AD, and the sequence in which they appear. 
So if I was to bake a cake, I wouldn't put all the ingredients in and then add the eggs at the end after it's come out the oven. Of course, then the cake's not going to work. And similarly with the strategy, when we consider ducky, which is discover, then utilize, then change and install, that utilization, I want to feed back the strategy to make sure that we've got the right order and sequence to get to the outcome that we want to get. So example, if my decision to buy strategy was a VADK, so visual, auditory, digital, kinesthetic, and you said to me, Wayne, I've got something that I'd like you to try on, and then you can have a look in the mirror and then decide if it's right for you. That is not the right sequence. Now it's the right elements, but not the right sequence. And so the right sequence and elements for me then would be rather you would say, Wayne, I have something to show you that you can just check, does it meet all your criteria? And then you can try it on and decide if it's the right thing for you. Well, that's totally different. Now that fits in with my strategy, my elements, as well as the sequence. So let's just talk about the elements first. So visual, we can have external or internal. So external is seeing something outside of yourself. Internal, I remember what someone or something looked like. Or construct, I can make up what someone or something would look like. Auditory, external, I can hear something outside of myself. Internal, I can remember what someone or something sounded like. Or constructed, I can make up a sound. So I could imagine what would my dog sound like if it mowed. For kinesthetic, external, this is the touch or feel of something or someone outside of you. Internal, I can remember the touch or feeling of someone or something. And constructed, I can make up a feeling of someone or something. Now we've also got proprioceptive, and proprioceptive is inside the body. So how do you feel? Feel hot, feel cold, feel happy, etc. Tactile is touching something. And meta is how you feel about someone or something. So meta is a evaluative feeling. Next, we've got auditory digital. And so this is your own self-talk. So that happens internally. Now, even if you speak to yourself quite loudly and, you know, you can hear it on the outside, you're still talking in your mind. So it's still internal. Gustatory is tasting something. So external, I can taste something. Internal, remembered. I can remember what last night's pizza tasted like. Constructed, I can imagine what last night's pizza would taste like if it had jalapenos and cream cheese olfactory i can smell something outside of myself or internal remembered i can remember what last night's pizza smelled like or constructed i could imagine what would the pizza smell like if it had sardines and cream cheese so those are the elements and of course then the sequence in which they appear, which we've already discussed.